Okay guys, it says I'm live. Hello, this is me periscoping almost for the first time. Uh, so uh, I'm doing where I write. Uh, okay, here goes. I don't know how to use periscope, so let's see. Double tap, there I am. Hello, how are you? Welcome to uh, to my flat, that's where I write. Uh, so I suppose, I won't keep you for too long. It says two to three, I won't keep you that long. I will warn you, some of the readings will be not suitable for work. So that's a major hashtag NSFW. Um, be gentle with me, I haven't done it before. <laughs> so if it goes wrong, I'll just start again, something like that. Anyway, so let's double tap. Where I write, very exciting. Uh, I tidied my desk. There you go, the desk is also the table because I don't have an office. So um, I did tidy up a little. There is uh, some flowers that somebody gave me. That's from Tenny. Uh, lovely Tenny. Oh, someone's saying our favourite judge. Hi guys, thanks Pet Sitters Ireland. I am judging the nose of Tralee for them later. Uh, incidentally, if I meet uh, miss any of your comments, just uh, let me know on Twitter later. Won't dwell. There are the flowers there. Uh, coincidental flowers from the lovely people at Tenny. Did a gig for them last week. Uh, some fruit. Writers need snacks. Uh, make sure you get some brown spots on your bananas. There's no point having things too perfect or have the fruit bowl full. That'd be ridiculous. So here, here is my to read pile at the moment. Uh, there's the wonderful Another Heartbeat in the House by uh, Kate Beaufoy. I've nearly finished that. I'm going to be um, launching that for her very soon. You should definitely get that. There are the rest of them. Give you a quick look. There you go. There you go. There you go. Um, I've noticed other uh, writers on this uh, series have showed you their library. I won't show you mine. It's much too messy. It's just a pile of books, basically. So here, uh, there's my book, that's the one I wrote last year. It's called Your Grand, The Irish Woman's Secret Guide to Life. This is the one I use for readings and stuff. There you can see all the things marked. I'll give you a little read of it later. Um, and there's other fascinating stuff, like a calculator with a zero on it. It's usually how it looks. I'm a writer, after all. Uh, yes, a quality badge. Headphones. Oh, the Southern Star. I'm from Kinsale, so I like a bit of nostalgia for home. Uh, then we get around to the more serious part of the whole writing setup. There's my laptop. That's where that's where the magic happens. So uh, feast your eyes on that. Um, I'm going to be doing a little reading for you in a minute. So I have my trusty spider thing. One of these little tripod yokes. So I'll be putting that up in a second and uh, giving you a little reading. But first I should also show you the whiteboard. The whiteboard of destiny on which I put ideas and that there that there is the name of the new book that is the book that's currently being edited so i'm sure to get some lovely notes from my uh my editor kira considine at hachette very soon and i'll be working on that on that like an idiot so uh yeah look show pitches column suggestions there are no real ones oh great thank you very much thanks very much hachette the publishers are interested in hearing me reading from it that's a good sign um a joke, chapter, ideas, and uh, a note to myself, do not write with permanent ink. That's something I, I always need to remind myself of because uh, uh, it's been known to happen. So I'm going to double tap again now. That's the rest. Okay. Hi. Hello. Okay. It's time for the reading because I promised I wouldn't take you too, uh, too much of your time. So this is from Your Grand and this is not suitable for work. A lot of people think Your Grand is um, like a nice, sweet, cozy book. But there's a lot of stuff in here not suitable for work. So uh, you might want to get your hands on it. There's erotica and all kinds in there. But I wanted to write something that's close to my heart, which is a little section in here called Women Aren't Funny. I don't know if you can see that. Women Aren't Funny. So I'll read that for you now, just to set up uh, women reading. It's very funny. Oh, thanks very much, Pet Sitters Ireland. I'll be sure to judge really well. Um, in your nose of Tralee competition. And as I said, if I do miss any of your comments when I'm reading or anything, please do tweet them at me, at Tara Flynn, and I'll, um, I'll respond to you there. So here we go. Women aren't funny. Only men are funny. Women aren't funny. Because women who are funny don't know their place. Even Irish women who we all know are hilarious, not funny. I don't care if you've written 10 jokes or have just made the postman laugh. A, there's no way those jokes can be funny. And B, you still know your postman. That must be a nice place you have there. Made up fact number four. A lot of made up facts in your grand. You probably thought that laughter came from the brain, from what made up experts call the humour centre. Wrong. Funny doesn't come from there. It comes from the penis. 
All laughter springs fully formed from the penis of a man for the hilarity and enjoyment of other humans. It's useless to try to fight this preconception that women aren't funny or point out that it's insulting and inaccurate and massively sexist. But so many journalists continue to bring it up that it seems we've been wrong. It's very irrelevant. It's current and pressing. The unfunny women chestnut, instead of being dull, unimaginative, lazy journalism, is in fact the vital probing of an ancient mystery. The bottom line being that women should stay home, knowing their place and laughing at whatever comes out of their partner's penis. So that's a little bit from your grand. Uh, so now on to, this is what the Where I Write uh, people wanted me to do, was read a little bit from a work in progress. So that's a little bit raw for any writer, um, as you know. So, uh, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to read this for you on the internet, you know, the warm, loving internet, which is really forgiving of works in progress. But here you go. I'm going to read a bit about uh, giving out yards. Giving out yards is the name of the book. And if you're not based in Ireland, giving out yards really means moaning like hell about something, just moaning, maybe not doing anything about it, but really getting it off your chest. So I'm going to tell you about a few characters who give out yards in the book and they might call someone on the radio to give out yards. They might write to the paper. Anyway, I wanted to talk about sex. It's one of my favorite topics, isn't it? Isn't it everyone's? And uh, there's a character in this called Maraid who likes the sound of her own voice. Now, Maraid, in Giving Out Yards, has written to uh, one of her local newspapers about sex. Um, as you can imagine, because she is a member of a society called the Order of the Genitals. Um, she isn't really, she's not a big fan of sex. Um, so I'll read you the uh, Maraid's letter about sex. Um, from giving out yards. She doesn't like you to bring it up, but Maraid is in the OOG, the Order of the Genitals, and she loves to write to the papers about sex. Dear Sir, it has come to my attention that in the modern Ireland of ours, everyone is having sex all the time, and not the good kind, the kind had in shame in the dark with the sole intention of having a baby at the end of it. The bad kind, the kind had for fun by people I don't know and have no intention of meeting. This doesn't stop me obsessing about their genitals and where they're putting those genitals, though. Oh, no. It's my duty to tell everyone why they should be thinking about other people's genitals and, in fact, be terrified of them. Sodomy is coming into Ireland like a big truck, driving around and forcing people to get into the back of it. Once you get on the sodomy truck, you can't get off. There are no brakes and it's perched on the top of a hill to hell. And that's where you're going if you have sodomy or support sodomy or even if you don't know what it is but aren't so terrified of the whole idea of it that you fall asleep screaming in case a sodomy merchant comes into your bedroom and makes you do it despite your thick protective layers of nightgown and prayer. I was only saying this to my husband who I see is far more than a penis on legs even though that is what we at OOG reduce everyone else to. People are genitals but dangerous genitals, because they're genitals with ideas. The lot that call themselves inclusive are killed saying that non-man-woman sex can be an expression of love and commitment. But it can't, because I can't get my head around that. I even hesitate to use the word head in case someone misunderstands and uses this against me on Twitter, saying that I'm pro-talking about genitals in an open forum. I'm not. They should be kept behind closed doors, genitals should, and if you're using them in any way like I imagine you are, if you're in a same-sex couple, then those doors should be those of a prison. Now, I never said that, so please don't remind me of it. There is a reason that homosexual acts were illegal. It's because they're way too sexy for most of us to handle and could easily warp a young mind into thinking that sex should be fun. It should not. Sex should be dutifully done by your husband to you. And if you don't have a husband, you should make sure that your hands are always in oven gloves to keep you from temptation. I still keep mine by the bed whenever my husband's away. It's not just the homosexuals, though. They're just an obvious target. There are loads of other names you're supposed to remember now. It's all buy this and trans that. I can't keep all that in my head. So-called straights are probably up to all sorts in privacy too. And I swear that I will make it my life's work to make sure that all sex is preceded by a decade of the rosary and a camera feed from the bed, 
it must be done in a bed. Direct to the parochial house, where several prominent parishioners can view the sex being had and make sure it's not deviant in any way. I spoke to the bishop after last week's confirmation and he said he'd be up for it. So that's that sorted. Please, please make sure that you think about other people's terrifying genitals. The way Ireland is going, I feel like we at the OOG, that's the Order of the Genitals, are the only ones still focused on this. Nobody else seems bothered, but I'm sure I've caught something just thinking about it. Better terror, fear and oven gloves than driving us all to hell on a truck called sodomy. A truck, I fear, that has no brakes. Michel Lamas, Maraid of the OOG. So that there is your sneak preview of uh, giving out yards. Um, there's lots of other stuff in there. It's not just about sex. Uh, so if you don't like sex, like Maraid, uh, don't worry. There'll be plenty of other stuff for you. There's a, practically an A to Z of all the things we in Ireland like to complain about, but don't do anything about. Um, so uh, just before I sign off, uh, any questions? I think Maraid are onto something. You think, thanks very much. Oh, R-O-F-L, I believe that's what young people say for rolling on the floor laughing, or it could be something about Rolf Harris, but we don't want to mention him. Uh, surely a song title, somebody says, you never know, maybe I'll do Giving Out Yards the musical. I'd love to do that. Um, so any other questions just before I leave you? I believe this whole uh, little section will be on uh, the Where I Write website. I'll tweet details of that later. Um, deadly stuff. Well, thanks very much. That's so cool. Um, I'm delighted if I make people laugh, but also if I get to be angry as well at the same time, vent my own anger against people who might not want other people to have the crack, then then so much the better. That's what I tried to do in your grand and that's what I'm hoping to do in giving out yards. So that's a little insight into where I write, basically at home, <laughs> at the kitchen table. Um, I hope there's a chapter about wolves. I don't think there is one about wolves, but I might do the song about wolves instead. Thanks for that question, that's brilliant. Uh, you've all been absolutely lovely. It's not like the internet, uh, but uh, you've been the nice end of the internet and I thank you for it. The internet does get a section, of course, in giving out yards. How could it not? Um, and there's Kieran, actually. Kieran, the keyboard warrior, is one of the characters. So he, he gets to wreak his vengeance on, on basically everybody. Um, thanks for those love hearts. You're absolutely brilliant. Uh, this will be up somewhere later. I'll, I'll tell you where. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, and uh, please buy the book. That would be lovely because otherwise I'll be writing here at this uh, godforsaken laptop with a whiteboard full of ideas for nothing. You've been brilliant. Thanks very much. See you soon. Take care.